here in Canberra, Ms. Catherine Wilkes, Ms. Diane Smith, Ms. Jenna, Jenny Cameron, and Ms. Amanda Smith, and also welcome via teleconference, Ms. Faye Whiffen. And Ms. Whiffen, are you on the teleconference? I am. Great, thank you very much and welcome. I'm thank Senator you. Smith and I'm the acting chair of the committee and I have with me this afternoon the Deputy Chair, Senator Rachel Seawitt, Senator Murray Watt, Senator Sue Lyons, and Senator Sky Kokoschke Moore. For the Hansard record, will you please state your full names and the capacity in which you appear today, and could you confirm that information on parliamentary privilege and the protection of witnesses and evidence has been provided to you? Okay, my name's Catherine Wilkes, and I'm here today as private president, also um, representing the No Cashless Debit Card Hinkler Region Facebook page and say no to the Cashless Welfare Debit Card Australia. I'm one of the admins. And, and um, information I understand on... the parliamentary privilege. Great, thank you very much. My name's Diane Smith. I live in Harvey Bay. I'm here as a Centrelink recipient and I would like to talk about Centrepay in relation to the rental system and also domestic violence services. And information on parliamentary privilege. Absolutely, thank you. Provided to you, thank you. My name is Jennifer Cameron. I'm here representing my son and the people of Hinkler um, about the Medicare card rebates, and um, I understand the parliamentary privilege. Thank you. <coughs> Good evening. My name is Amanda Smith. I'm a representative of the Say No Seven community, and I'm here as a Centrelink recipient as well. And I understand the public. Pub uh, the parliamentary privilege. Thank you. And Ms. Whiffen? Uh, yes, my name is Faye Whiffen. I am here as an individual, although I am the president of the Burren District Community Centre in Howard, and I do understand the parliamentary privilege. Great. Thank you all very much. You are each welcome to make a short opening statement if you like, uh, but just to make you aware that. The longer the opening statements, the less time we have for uh, questions and discussions. Mm -hmm. So if you would like, I now invite you to make a short opening statement and at the conclusion of your remarks, I'll invite members of the committee to put questions to you. So we'll start with Ms Wilkes. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm here today to represent my daughter and also to stand up for all of the children, the youth, the young adults, the parents and the unemployed under 35 of age facing being forced onto the INDU um, income management in the cashless debit card in the Hinkler region. I'm here to tell this community face to face that the Hinkler electorate does not want the CDC to be rolled out into our community. I'm here to say that it's been left up to us to inform our community members of all of the facts and the impacts of the card should it come into our region. For the last six months, my friends and I have been providing our community with the Indu terms and conditions, the ORIMA reports and all of the information from all of the academic research that has been published about the CDC. I need to tell the committee today that there's been little to no public consultation. Uh, what was taken place has been behind closed doors and by misinformed DSS staff that hadn't read the Indu terms and conditions. Minister Pitt is claiming a 70% yes vote for the rollout, yet community surveys that were taken by our local newspapers and the Fraser Coast Chronicle in May and the news mail Bundaberg have consistently showed both an 84% no vote in May and for the Fraser Coast Chronicle paper, and then again in October, um, just recently, 86% no vote from the news mail Bundaberg from the people not the stakeholders or the government. So the minister's only real public consultation has been via a mail out to approximately 32,000 people across a region of approximately 142,000 people in population. I'd like to table this evidence that I have here, which has also been notarised as its copies of originals um, of the surveys. The first survey uh, which is this one, it was a general community letter, had um, on the back, it had issues. So tick which issues you were concerned about in the community. However, at the top of it was, do you support the cashless debit card? Straight off as a question. Nothing to do with any of the other issues that were being discussed or asked for. Nowhere to comment except for your own uh, personal details. 
So that one had nowhere to comment on. The second one was sent to only old age pensioners. Now this one was quite unusual because although it had the go petition that you could only vote yes on, which a lot of old age pensioners wouldn't understand because they don't have the internet. So they, they put on the back, you know, um, I support the introduction of the cashless debit card, or I do not support it, but this was only sent to old age pensioners who will not be on the card, who are not affected by it. And many of our old age pensioners are fairly wealthy, self-refunded. So they, they, and they don't, they're not included in our world, you know. So the third one was sent to people that were on benefits or under the old age pension and they got the go petition that you could only vote yes for. That was it. That was the kind, you know. So I'd like to table these if, if somebody would like to have them um, and just be aware of the privacy of the person who sent them to me. So the... We'll make sure that that's, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Okay, I can do that for you. Mm -hmm. The entire process has been a debacle of dividing Conco and it's a nightmare, it's torn our community in two. People are afraid to voice their concerns, many are leaving. Many won't stand up and have been threatened. They, ca they can't speak. You can't mention the Indu CDC mm -hmm. because you might lose your volunteer hours at the charity that you're working for, such like. So, um, and no one's really answered a lot of the very important questions. Without proof that we need this card, we're asking, why us? Uh, yeah, and so that's my opening short statement. Thank you, Ms Wilkes. Ms Smith. Yeah, uh, my son's ex-partner was asked to vacate her rental dwelling within half an hour of the announcement that Hinkler was becoming the next site for the Hindu cashless card. She had been in that house with my three grandchildren for approximately three years, and she was given less than 24 hours to leave. She is currently living with me and is undergoing dispute proceedings through the RTA. The primary reason given verbally to her was that she was in arrears in her rent and the owner wanted cash. This is not true and that she would be unable to continue to pay her rent due to the card being coming in. As it turns out, she will not be included in the, the first trial, the first rollout, because she's actually 36 years of age. She was on centre pay and the owner did not wish to see the statement from Sendling, which um, clearly showed that she was in, in front with her rent, not behind. Most landlords and rental agents in Harvey Bay do not accept the card of any kind and my own agent insists on cash to a bank account or cash to their office. Very few, if any, will entertain centre pay. Given mission creep, it may well be that myself and my family will be evicted and become homeless if and we eventually are forced onto the Hindu cashless debit card. There are a few support services in Harvey Bay with pre-existing services either being closed or defunded. There is no domestic violence shelter in Harvey Bay, nor are there homeless shelters or mental health facilities. The nearest services are all in Maryborough, which are 30 k's away, with very restricted public transport, and the roads between the two towns are subject to flooding, which at times of heavy rain puts Harvey Bay cut off. At the DSS meeting, uh, of which there was one in Harvey Bay, we asked many questions, many such questions, as well as asking about the benefit of the card for people not meeting any of the target criteria. I was told that they were only there to tell us how the card would be rolled out, not to answer questions. We were just told how it was going to happen. When pressed, I was told it would, be, uh, it would mean that anyone on the card would simply have to change the way they budgeted. This to me means reprogramming for no reason and being income managed for no crime. I believe this is a control mechanism which puts me back in a domestic violence situation, in this case also financial bullying, and it will have no positive outcomes for most of the participants, but many negative implications. In turning down the Uluru solution the other day, Mr Turnbull said it would not be in the interests of most Australians 
and the LNP believed in civil rights for all Australians. That should include Centrelink recipients. Thank you. Ms Cameron. The issue I am bringing to you today is, in July, the people asked DSS important questions to be answered. Recent notification received by email yesterday via the DSS is that under the cashless debit card, Medicare rebates will be paid to the card and not your personal account. This means that with my son's doctor's visits, the $65 bill must be paid out of his 20 per cent cash portion, yet gets nothing back to his personal account. So I will have to help him monetarily with these bills. This is going to make it difficult considering I am also trying to raise my daughter who has autism spectrum dis autis autistic spectrum disorder. Not in any flyer or media anywhere at any time in the last six months did Mr. Pitt, Minister Pitt or the DSS ever tell us that this was going to happen or was part of the program. It will limit his abilities to budget, affect his 20% cash portion greatly considering he needs to see his doctor weekly makes it impossible to see doctors on, your, on a regular basis with only that cash portion available. This will affect many families in the Hinkler region dealing with complex medical issues. When we say we weren't informed of the serious consequences of this card, we meant it. In the same email from the DSS that gave us this new information about rebates, the department said that the cashless debit card was not income management just an alternative payment method. However, if it was, then I would have an in-due cashless debit card and full access to my entire Centrelink payment, as, does my, as would my son, not have, it not have restricted access or third-party bill payments or restricted spending. These are, the, these are, in essence, income management. And that's what I have. Thank you. Ms Smith. Thank you. I'm here today to affirm the submission made by the Sano 7 community and our primary concerns that the community panel's process as a structure is open to abuse um, and that the CDCT has not proven the efficacy of compulsory income management portion of the program in the current trial regions. But primarily in support of Hinkler Region today, I'm here to address the issue of the majority cohort of Centrelink recipients that do not meet the CDC target group criteria. Due to time constraints, <laughs> I will uh, table our full argument and statement regarding that issue. Uh, but in brief, the statement addresses uh, uh, having our human rights as a cohort uh, of non, sorry, the people who do not meet the target group, um, having their human rights infringed upon without benefit or just cause, and the impact of having our freedom in Australian society curtailed without lawful justification under the current legislation. As the Human Rights Council noted in its submission to this committee, as it stands today, the CDC in its current form does not meet human rights standards under law. And in the case of Hinkle electorate, the loosely specified purposes of intergenerational welfare and youth unemployment are obtuse and ambiguous. They, don't, they do not appear to me as a layperson to meet the justification of standards set down by the Human Rights Act. And without individual assessment of each and every selected participant in the payment categories, they cannot be validated or justed un just justified under non-discrimination laws. I wish to address the issue of mission creep as it relates to the changes in the program implementation methods as they relate to the Hinkler electorate rollout. And I ask this committee to please examine these changes in implementation and their impact upon the human rights and non-discrimination provisions within the current legislation. Rather than pausing to address human rights and non-discrimination encroachments that have already taken place in the trial regions, the department seems to be now targeting entire Centrelink payment categories rather than specific target groups within those categories. And it appears that they are repeating the same mistake of blanket inclusion in a different form. And so the human rights infringements witnessed within the trial zones today are going to be repeated in the Hinkler, in the Hinkler electorate. Uh, this shift from target groups to target payments does represent a significant change in scope, in my opinion. It appears to imply 
That, in being, that being in receipt of a Centrelink payment alone, or simply being unemployed or a parent, can now be considered justification enough to be put on a card, external to any of the specified focus criteria that is required under the Act and in the current legislation. Given neither method of implementation takes into account the unjustified, potentially unlawful infringements upon the human rights and non-discrimination rights of Centrelink, the Centrelink recipient cohort who do not meet the stated purpose, I would ask this committee to reconsider or to consider whether a, re a reversal of the burden of proof would not be the best option going forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms Whiffen, would you like to make some brief opening remarks? Yes, thank you. And I thank you for allowing me the opportunity to participate. 20 years ago last March, I was on a bus entering San Diego and I saw a sign which asked people not to give money to the homeless people. Instead, it asked that food vouchers be purchased to give to these unfortunate people. I immediately thought, why are we not doing this in Australia? It seems obvious to me that the best way to help people who needed help was to give vouchers for the essentials in life. I was delighted when I heard of the introduction of the cashless debit card. I have for many years tried to get elected representatives to embrace the concept of vouchers. And whilst it's no silver bullet to certain problems, the CDC is taking the first step in the right direction with the introduction of this card in the entire and I do live in the intra-electorate. I believe that the card will help ensure that many children will receive the necessities of life to which they are entitled, but sadly do not now receive. I believe that so many younger people who, are, who currently are in receipt of welfare will also be better off and will come to see and acknowledge that in time. I believe this because I see these families and young people every day as a result of living in a small town. I've lived in cities and small towns and I do not see anything that has made me question my first instinct from 20 years ago in San Diego. I have consulted with a number of people, not only in Howard, but also in the Bay, all over the place. And I have had nothing but overwhelming support for the, the cashless debit, debit card. I don't question the introduction of this card. I only question why it's taken so long, and I welcome any questions you may have. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Ms Wiven. I'll ask Senator Kokoski more to start. Thanks, Thanks Chair. Uh, Ms Cameron, you mentioned in your statement that you received some written advice from DSS about um, what you could use the 20 per cent for. That's right. Is that something you could share with the committee? Yes, yeah. I can put it on notice. Yeah, thank you. That would be fantastic. Thank you. And um, I think, was it was it you, Miss Smith, that, that mentioned that there are no domestic violence shelters in Harvey Bay? That's correct. Okay. What, are, what are some of the other essential services that are missing there at the moment, regardless Homeless of whether services, the card comes? There are mental health services. Yeah. Um, quite a lot of the medical services we have to go to Maryborough or Bundaberg or Brisbane. How far? For, do, forgive me, I'm from South Australia. Okay. What's the distance? Um, Maryborough is about 30 kilometres away. Yep. However, that road is subject to flooding, severe flooding, okay, so we're yes. cut yep. off virtually yep. when it rains heavily. Bundaberg is a couple of hours north, yep. and, and Brisbane is about four hours to the okay. south. So. Most of the yeah. specialists, if you've got to see a specialist or a doctor yeah, yeah. or get drug rehab or anything like that, you have to go to Brisbane. You have to go to Brisbane. Okay. Um, yeah. Bundaberg Base Hospital is very low on specialists. Okay. Uh, unless you've got the money to have a private specialist, you have to go to Brisbane for most of the services. That talking about the public health. You know, yeah. um, <coughs> the only drug rehab ability is in Harvey Bay, but it's a, it's a, a, a non-government funded one. So it's $28,000 a month, I believe, to attend that. They only have 25 beds and they cover the whole east coast from Brisbane all the way up past Mackay. So there's no public drug rehab um, and there's very few services. Like my own daughter was going through Headspace. She lost her, um, her support worker when they cut $157 million out of Headspace. Mm -hmm. Straight away, half of the Headspace staff in Harvey Bay were gone and my daughter just got left hung out to dry again with no support services. So, yeah, 
Um, the, um, the surveys that you tabled for us today, thank you very much for that. You, you had quite a lot of information about um, who they were sent to. Was that, how did you get that information? That information was forwarded to me for, um, from the Bundaberg Awareness Group. Okay. I actually know um, Sharon and Peter. Yeah. And um, so they sent that, they did that for me. Okay, so they um, were able to determine that there was one survey that was only sent to people who were on the age yeah, pension. Yeah, the one there that's for the old age pensioners. Yeah. Uh, the reason why I've actually got the originals, the reason why I don't have the original of that is her father did send it back in. Okay. But yeah. she got the copy and notarised it beforehand. Yeah. Um, but he'd sent his back in. Okay. So I was that unable you, to find anyone in Harvey I Bay. I didn't get one, so I don't know. I live in Torquay in Harvey <laughs> yeah. Bay, but nothing came through my letterbox, so I didn't see any of them. Thank but they did get those up there in Bundaberg. Yeah. And um, just finally from me, Miss Smith, at the end of your statement, you suggested that the onus of proof should be reversed. Would yes. you like to just explain that a little bit more for the committee, um, how you would see that working? OK, I sort of, um, I thought all the questions would go up that end of the table. <laughs> oh, good. Take your time. Um, Burden of proof right now is, um, if I was to go to court, I'll use an analogy if that's permissible. Yep, if I was to go to court today, I would have to be convicted of a crime in order to be in the court, to be arrested, to go through the, juris the process. Um, under this card, you don't. You're just in there and then you actually have to go through the entire criminal, you know, the Crimes Act to get out of the courtroom. Mm. And in the case of the crash of debit card, there's no getting out of the courtroom. You are in the courtroom forever, mm. as it's been noticed today. Um, and that sort of under that analogy, it's the same thing. The burden of proof in our society has always been a matter of dignity. It's always been a matter of if the government wishes to impose upon, seriously impose upon, the rights and freedoms of Australian citizens, that it has to have a really good justification. And the um, I've, I've actually written here. We know that the CDC legislation to be considered lawful, to be considered justified under the Human Rights Act and the Non-Discrimination Act. The, Anti uh, the Racial Act, the Disability Rights Act, Rights of the Child, the, the entire Act, um, requires the existence of that specific target group. It requires a clearly stated intention and objective, and ordinarily a time duration. This is, as the gentleman that were here before us were, were saying, this is intended for a national rollout. So I can't speak for how things are occurring in particular communities, because that's their right to speak for themselves. Mm. But from a national perspective, like the community panels on a structural level, this isn't meeting its own brief now. And with the qualification from the Human Rights Commission that it's not meeting human standards already, mm. going forward is going, you know, with the burden of proof, you give people an opportunity to, you know, to to justify, what, or to give the government a chance to justify why people need a card, and you give people a chance to, to stand up for themselves. And it is a matter of the, the payment isn't a welfare payment. We've, we've all got a bit of a bug there this week because Centrelink isn't a welfare payment. It is a, an, you know, an inalienable payment under law. You know, uh, it is a legal entitlement protected by three international act or four international conventions. It was never intended to become a part of the intimate social welfare system, which has its own acts. Mm. It has its own government. We address that in our argument, so I didn't want to, you know. <laughs> but yeah, the, by reversing the burden of proof, you give back some dignity to the person who is being accused of being unmanageable because. Mm. With absolute due respect to the people that we, you know that do fit the target group and have a long way to go, mm. the cohort of people currently facing this card is over 52 per cent. So when the memorandum talks about the greater good, we are the greater cohort, mm. and we are having our freedom. This government is taking control of our lives for no reason. I've committed no crime. Mm. My child has committed no crime. And yet, the imposition of a card in the life of my child, he would not be here today because the cash component that we would have re we required cash to see specialists for his diagnosis for cancer. <coughs> he, and we didn't, if we'd had no cash access, he wouldn't have got diagnosed because he was in treatment for nearly nine months before the first letter from the Department of Health came offering us mm. our first MRI. So he wouldn't be here today under the, if we had been forced on the card. Mm. And I'm, we are so not an exceptional case. Yeah. We are the norm. The people, we were just saying before, the people that are deciding this program for us live in a different reality that seems to change every $10,000 you earn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and by the time you get to their base salaries, they're not in a universe that in any way comprehends to our universe. Mm -hmm. We have uh, an economy of cash economy where we 
we, we do this. It's not a shell game. It's not nothing wrong with it. We've just learnt to manage because life is messy and you can't get everything done in order. And this is an imposition of order. I am a manageable person. I am a long-term, clean and sober person. I'm a person who's recovered from enormous hardship. And having cash and not having cash had nothing to do with that process, you know? And this is an imposition on that. Thank you. Thank That's you. very powerful. Thank you. Ms Cameron, I didn't quite follow the MBS, um, your, the Medicare payment. Sorry, not MBS, but the Medicare payment. You were told, and I think, is, I think that's what you're going to pro provide us the explanation. But so I've got it in my head. Mm -hmm. You've been told that the payments, the rebate, will the go rebate. into the Inju account. Yes. Not your in, any the other account. The whole that you... rebate will go into okay. the, onto the card. Okay. So you know, normally you get that twenty percent cash component. But as soon as you go and pay for a doctor, that rebate that you'd normally get back in cash into your account then goes onto the card. So that's, it ends up being more than 20%. Okay, but could, could you not pay, you would be able to pay your doctor's appointment or your, the bill off the card though? No. They're, they're not going to let you do that? No. Is that it's up to the doctor. Specialists require cash yeah. payments up front. They do. And then you get the rebate back. Mm -hmm. And but, if you've got two but, kids, you, you basically take one to an appointment, take, get the rebate to pay to the other one to the next appointment. Mm. Yeah. Um, but specialists but you, don't accept credit cards. It's not payment. cash in hand, though. Yes. 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 It is cash in hand. Yes. Oh, they, they require yeah, we they cash. cash. In they your reason. doctor, put it back in the your, your Most, doctor yeah. requires you to pay cash in hand. That's right. Yeah. Right. Okay, rather than being able to take it off your debit account. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. And a lot of doctors in the area do that. Yeah. And then you won't be able to get the cash back. No. That's no. right. So it ends up being more than 20%, yeah. or okay. less than 20% that you'll actually be getting in cash in the, in the end. Yeah. So you pay the doctor $65, you get your $30 back, but that goes back that in goes your card. So yeah. you're. Down. So that, therefore, you've lost that yeah. that that thirty five yeah. dollars difference is what of, you're saying of cash. Yeah. yeah. Okay. While I have yeah. your attention, just really quick, am I able to table this? Um, I thought I'd point out to the Senate. Um, it's a gift card because I regularly use Afterpay, which currently is accepted on the CDC, and with every purchase that you make through Afterpay, they're all different businesses. They send you out a gift card for $100 to spend on wine. Can you just, what is Afterpay? Can you just explain for us? <laughs> for Afterpay is basically like a lay-by system mm -hmm. where you have multiple businesses that you can um, access to buy products through, a bit like eBay kind of. Um, but they give you four fortnights to pay it off. But you so, get the goods straight away. But you get the goods okay, straight so away. Yeah. But in the process of getting your goods, you, get. you also get this. So in effect, getting people off alcohol isn't working. So that's a free voucher for that's $100 a free worth of alcohol. Of for $100 worth of wine. And how much do you have to spend to get the $100 voucher? You don't have to. That's $100 to spend straight away. It's a gift card and, and you're not allowed to purchase gift cards. So I thought I'd table payment. that to you guys today. <laughs> I'm interested to understand how much you've got to spend with Afterpay before you, before get, you the get the gift, out. gift card. Well, I, I bought be giving money away for free. I, mean. I bought my yep. <laughs> I bought my animal products, um, which worked out to a little over a hundred dollars, flea and tick stuff, and they sent that in the box. Oh, it's a business mm. model that's not going to last very long. I can assure you. <laughs> <laughs> it's also loyal patronage over time. You know. So let's see what. Um, can I, just, can I go back to this consultation, pro, the, the consultation? Because yep. you know, we're, we've been told there's been consultation. Okay. Um, can you just take, there's one, you said there was one in? There was one DSS meeting. One. All right, in, in Harvey, Harvey Bay. Bay. There was one in Bundaberg. Yep. There was a closed meeting at the Chamber of Conver uh, Commerce in Childers. 
people from Bundaberg and Harvey Bay were not allowed to mm -hmm. attend. What's a closed was, meeting, sorry? Sorry? What's it, what it was you closed to... Um, well, Only to residents of Shields. Well, hang on, no, no. Shields. Yeah, well, ICES, well, for, ICES, yeah. Shields used to come under uh, the ICES electorate, which no longer exists because it's amalgamated with Bundaberg Council. So only ICES residents were allowed to go to that particular meeting. We were all told to stay away. Um, and Bundaberg residents were also told as well mm -hmm. that they were not allowed to attend. So that one was a closed shop. That was... Okay, at that point, um, we had Pitt. none. Yeah. So, so you went to the... Oh, you'd had none when it was in Childers. Hang on, no. let, me, let me do this yeah, timeline, yeah, OK? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So <laughs> basically, that was the... Um, uh, it was the... That was in August. Right, so the, the 8th of August they had theirs up at Bundaberg. Mm -hmm. It was on a peak time, so it was very difficult for parents to get to because it was a school pick-up time. And... Um, so therefore, they they had two DSS officers there, and they they separated people into groups. I, I wasn't at the Bundaberg one; I was at the Harvey Bay one, okay. which when was, was on the 9th of the 9th. Um, August. Yep. And they, we found at the community centre they had the same thing. They segregated everybody into three different groups. They had a couple of officers from different areas. They virtually did tell people that this is how it's going to be when it's rolled out. There was no choices, no answers for questions. We were just reminded that basically you're going to have to learn to live a different way. So you weren't being asked, do I undertake, understand from what you've just been, just said, you weren't asked for your opinion on whether you should have, whether you supported the cashless welfare card. Was that, were you? No, we were, we were told by the DSS officers that it was this coming. This is how it will be And this is how it will be rolled out. Okay. Um, so there, Okay, sorry, I'm so that's all right. We ended up with over 50 people walking out very angry, mm -hmm. very frustrated, no answers answered except for going round and round in circles and, and being told things that the Indu card just cannot do. At this time, it can't do. Uh, I mean, um, yeah, it, it just, it was really frustrating to go through that meeting and there's no choice. It, we're just being told it's coming, accept it, you can't stop it. And it's like, yeah, with it. They've why? They actually said mm. those exact words. It's time to to accept it. Yeah. You know, We've been they've told actually that said in the media and yeah, yeah, and mm. it's been in the media and yeah. and stuff like that. And it's Senator Watt. Uh, I think most of my issues have been covered off. But as a senator for Queensland, I can assure all the other senators that Harvey Bay and Bundaberg are excellent towns that everyone should spend some time in. Um, and it's very disappointing to hear about the, what seems to be the lack of consultation um, that's been undertaken. Um, specifically when we've asked the department about this consultation, they've talked about what I presume are the same meetings that you've just talked about with, uh, and they talked about the, you know, involving local communities, church groups, employment and training services, alcohol and other drug services. I take it then that there was an opportunity for members of the public to come along as well? No. Right, so no. you were there as, a commu as community we, groups or...? We, we protest the... We, <laughs> okay, where do I start? They the organised a Chamber of Commerce meeting at a bookshop um, that was close to the public, that was private. We organised to do a small peaceful protest out front. They moved it to the mantra. And so we protested there, but that was again closed to the public. That was only for businesses, Alan Tudge and uh, Mr Pitt to attend, none of us. So then later on, um, they had more little secret meetings around town at the community centre and other places, which the public were not included in. We did discover another one. So they meant getting up early and getting cold. Mm -hmm. And we went and stood outside the community centre and we protested peacefully. And we actually got invited into one. Jenny and myself were invited into one, have a cup of tea, come in, sit in with the community groups and the DSS, which we did. And we, um, I don't think uh, Melissa from the DSS was very impressed with us because we started questioning the Indu terms and conditions immediately. Because the Indu terms and conditions are rock solid black and white. There's no room for movement. and these are the issues that people will be living under. Mm -hmm. And the DSS will do anything 
to block the name Indu and terms and conditions from being published anywhere. Because if the general public really found out what these people are going to be put under, they'll all be standing up saying, no, mm. you can't do that to people. Mm. So well, there's been apparently, there's been over 110 meetings in our region, from what I understand by the media. Um, there's been media in the paper. We tried to actually buy advertising space in our own paper to in, put out information. We were denied, so therefore our voice has been silenced. And any media that we have received, it's been very, very heavily edited. Um, I've done a number of press interviews and television, and we've done it, um, several of us have done it, and everything is very heavily edited. Officially, we've only had three for the whole area, for the public well, meetings. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, but that was I think, I think when the department, I mean, they're up next, so we'll be able to ask them, but I think when the department's talked about there being 110 consultations, I think what they're talking about is that there have been 110 different people or groups as part of those three meetings. Um, no, well, no. Those, oh, those three meetings were that you had the Harvey Bay meeting and you had the Childers meeting, which was closed, and you had the, but they were at different times. Yeah. The Childers meeting was on the 20th of July, I think, or on the 20th of June. I'm not quite sure. All right. We didn't get public consultation from the DSS and members of INDU actually attending until the Tuesday of the 8th of August um, for Bundaberg, and that was from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., so it was bang on school pick-up time, so parents couldn't get to go. And then on the 9th, which was, I think, uh, was ours 12 to 2? Yeah. No, I think ours 12 to 2. I 12. Think it was. Yeah. But that was it. That was the only public cons consultation, apart from stuff that we've done as a community, and, and we've had mm. people come and hold other public meetings trying to raise awareness. Mm. The only, I mean, in terms of the level of community support, again, it sort of feels like, depending who you talk to, you get a different view about this. Mm. Keith Pitt is out there talking about how great his survey is and it shows huge community support. You're obviously saying something quite different. Mm. What, what, how confident, what is it that makes you confident that you do speak on behalf of the community in saying that the people don't want it when Keith Pitt's out there saying the okay, opposite. Okay. Um, in effect, the, in, the way we got here. Well, the, the way we got here, the local community mm. of Hinkler <coughs> paid for us mm. to yeah. be here. I was going to say, right. thank you for going to the trouble and cost of coming down here. It's, it's great that you did that. Right. Mm. They fundraised for the last six months to be able to help us with T-shirts, banners, anything we needed. We had, we had business yeah. donate premises for us to use as a drop-in centre for 12 weeks, free of charge. Um, we've done community events and stuff like that. Um, and we have 2,063 members on the Hinkler page, on our Facebook page. We also have nearly 3,900 on our national Say No to the Cashless Welfare Card page. Uh, these people are engaged all the time. And uh, there's more growing because we have more pages around the country. But I also have here almost 900 written signatures from people in our electorate that don't want the card, that have read the terms and conditions, do understand mm. what it is about. And How many did you say you've got there? I've got nearly 900. Mm. From just... From... This from, was... From your electorate? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was very difficult to get them in Harvey Bay because we couldn't get any support as to where we could put them. Because even though I've been speaking to a lot of businesses so where myself... Did you, where did you put those in the end? We sat at Bundaberg Central Business District Pavilion and most of the time we sat and had chats and we had a table and we had all the information and we had the signatures. And what I loved about Bundaberg was people just walked up. They knew in their mind that they didn't want it. They didn't like it for lots of reasons, but they weren't harassed or solicited into signing these. There we is also had petitions at labour um, market stalls in Maryborough and in Harvey Bay as well. And at the That's shop. Less yeah. surprising, and at the shop. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah. Senate, uh, Minister yep. Donaldson also that was state. Petition. Like and, and you'd be aware Leanne Donaldson gave evidence Absolutely. here earlier today. Well, we've well. got Leanne Donaldson and, and we've got our... Um, 
Also, our local <coughs> um, ALP candidate, Adrian Tantari, has been also fighting alongside us. And he's and do, you he's that told undermines, do you think that undermines your perception of being independent? Why would that? Why, because why? why? Because, because well, I thought on. when you were talking about the petitions, I thought you were on a very, very on very, very strong ground, you know, out in the mall. Well, hang on a minute. Yeah. The petitions mm. ourselves, mm. we sat up at Bundaberg mm. with no political connections. Mm. Right. I don't doubt that. That's right. Okay, so myself yep. and that. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm talking Adrian, about separate well, hang petitions. On, yeah. Yeah. Adrian's done yeah. his own. We've done petitions right. as they, well. Leanne Donaldson and, and Labor Leanne. did their own. Yeah. Mm. These are my petitions that I mm. did, and yeah. I shared them with Bundaberg, and we've used them. And um, so there's no Labor, Liberal, One Nation, or Greens attachment. Because mm. I don't belong, belong to any party. However, no I am not going to. We were very happy to have their support, to tell you the truth, yeah. and and with yeah. the Greens mm. as well. So it's you know, okay. of course. We almost. We do have some more final more witnesses more. to hear yeah. from this afternoon. Any other questions? No. Thanks again for coming. Well, I might just say one more thing. I've been as I've been going around shopping no. and getting my hair cut, etc. Um, I talked to my hairdresser the other day. She knows nothing about the car, doesn't know if someone comes in. I said, well, how would, you, how would I be going if I was giving you a card to pay? Well, she said, I've no idea. Don't do it because I don't know. And this also happened with my butcher. It also happened at my chemist. And it's happening all over Harvey Bay. So there's a lot of people that What's haven't been What's been clear in the evidence today, and this will be the last could I, question. Could I just ask I will ask you, I, I, I'm going to come to you very, very shortly, um, Ms. Wilson, because you. you've been very very, very patient. One of the things that's come out very, very strongly is that community opinions are divided and there are always different views and different justifications for those views. So, Ms Whiffen, based on what you've heard today, because you're a local resident as well, uh, are there any final comments that you would like to make? You've been very patient. Well, um, I cannot agree with the comments that I've heard because it's, in total, it's totally different to what I have been <laughs> Uh, told by a number, not only of residents, but also of um, business houses. And I have had numerous discussions with the police as well. And um, for obvious reasons, they can't comment publicly, but I've had extensive discussions with very senior uh, police officers and also rank and file police officers. And they believe, they strongly believe that the introduction of this card is going to um, be of great benefit to the entire society. So, and that is the feedback that I get <coughs> from all over the place. And I'm, uh, I am just talking to people all the time and asking them. Thank you, Ms. Whiffen. Thank you, others, for providing evidence this afternoon. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.